Okay, so this is just a quick little video on how to uh, use your sewing machine, the Singer 401. First thing you want to do to wind a bobbin is slide this thing open and pull the bobbin out. You can either use the metal bobbin. I, I kind of prefer these little plastic ones because you can see how much thread, you can see the color, and they don't get bent or rust. So take your bobbin, the bobbin winder, uh, is the bobbin is wound on this side. So take a good quality thread, place it on this spool pin here, put it underneath the little uh, caps, the little uh, tensioner, and then take the thread and pass it, take your bobbin and pass the thread from the inside of the bobbin through one of those little holes in the side and pull it through. Oops, I kind of dropped it, but you'll see what I'm doing here. And that is the thread goes from this thing up to the inside of the bobbin and then out through the side like that. Then place the bobbin, sorry about my photography here, place the bobbin on the bobbin winder spindle. So now the thread goes from there up into there and push it all the way up against this wheel. So it's pushed up against the hand wheel and it should turn like that. Then uh, while holding this outside wheel tight, loosen the inside wheel. I can't do this one handed. So this inside wheel is gonna loosen like that. And that will prevent the needle from going up and down. So then hold on to the thread with your left hand and then go ahead and just run the machine. And you'll see that it's gonna fill uh, the bobbin. So it's just going from there up to the bobbin. And if you look closely, you'll see that this thread is just kind of twisting. After it winds a bit, you can just clip the thread and let go. And then you can go ahead and fill it up. The spool will go flying, so I put my finger on the top. Keep it from going, fly going flying. So once you get it um, threaded enough, just clip your thread. Take the bobbin off and drop it down. And then pick up your thread and we'll set it on top of the machine and we'll get to the threading now. But before you do the threading, you have to put the bobbin into the bobbin case, okay? So the way you're gonna do that is take the thread so that the thread is coming off of the front of the bobbin. So it kind of looks like a P there, but it's coming off of the front. Drop it in the cup like that. And then while holding it with your finger, you need to take the thread and make sure that it goes into this little slot in the bobbin. And it's just a little slot and you bring it around and, it, and it'll click into place and then it'll go into another little groove that's in there. So I'm gonna hold that really close so you can see how that is going. So the thread should turn counterclockwise like that. Let me see if I can get a better shot of that for you. So I'm gonna take it out whoops, and I'm gonna drop it in like that. And then I'm gonna hold my finger here on the bobbin and make sure that the thread goes in that slot. Whoops, it broke, that's funny. Um, drop it in, hook it in that little slot, bring it around until it clicks into place. And then the thread should just go through that little slot and then just bring it to this angle so it's near where the needle's gonna go through. So next we're gonna thread the machine, which means I'm gonna have to uh, show you up on the top here. Um, take your thread from the spool, you can put it on this spool or the other one, doesn't really matter. And then pull the thread through this little guide, just like that, and it kinda clicks right into place. Now this is, whoops, this is the, I apologize for having terrible uh, photographing skills here. Really important is to get the thread in the tensioner the right way. So 
raise the presser foot up because these discs get loose and then when you lower the foot down they tighten up so it has to be up and if you take your thread and there's a little almost like a little ramp right here this little piece of metal and if you just pull it it'll go in between one of those discs there make sure you don't get the thread behind all the discs it's almost hard to get it in there back there like that you don't want that you don't want it to be back in the back and you don't want it to be in the front like this it has to go in between a couple of those discs then this is really important bring it around put your hand put your finger up on top of the spool to keep it tight and pull the thread upward and with this little spring until it kind of clicks like that and hooks into that little hook so now the thread should do like this and that's what you want then you just slip the thread behind this little guide and it should go like that next we want to thread the take-up lever the take-up lever is a very important part of the sewing machine this lever goes up and down with every stitch. The stitch begins when the take-up lever is at the top, and as the stitch is cycling and going through its motions, it's halfway done, and now the stitch is finished. So whenever you thread the machine, whenever you stop a seam or start a seam, you need to make sure that this take-up lever is in the top position, not down here or halfway. So, yeah, most people have a tendency to be sewing and stop when the needle is up, but more importantly, you have to keep going until this is up to the top, otherwise the stitch is not finished. So, when we're th threading the machine, we've got it to the point where we uh, talked about it a minute ago. It's clicking through there. Then we want to make sure that we thread the take-up lever going from the right to the left and just pass it through this little eye of the of the take up lever then there's a little guide here and then there's another guide down below let me uh get this situated here another guide um here so we just push the thread in there and it kind of hooks in there like that you'll see it it's this little guide here and so it guides from the side so we just hook it like that and there's a guide here and one more on right above the needle so it kind of goes it kind of alternates it goes from the right from the left and then from the right again and then making sure that your needle is all the way up and inserted correctly, according to the instruction book, you just thread the needle from the front to the back. So, my eyes are terrible. Don't get old, whatever you do. So there you go. Now it's threaded, and hold on to the thread, it doesn't matter which side, and then turn the hand wheel one rotation till the needle comes up, and then the take-up lever, of course, comes to the very top, and then it will pull the thread up from the bobbin. And then you can gather both the needle thread and the bobbin thread, push it underneath the foot so it goes to the back, slide your cover closed, and you're ready to sew. Now, let me say a few words about the pattern selector because there are a variety of different stitches that you can use. And so, we want to make sure that you know how this works. If you open up the lid, there's all kinds of uh, instruction here what to do. So there's a really simple rule of thumb here that if you use this, it will save you a lot of grief. This control here controls the width of the stitch. So when it's on zero, no matter what you're doing, it's going to be a straight stitch. It won't have a zigzag. And of course you change the length of your stitch over here, depending on how many stitches per inch. But this control up here is really important. So if 
you want to change a stitch, you have all these different um, choices. So to change it, you push, to change this side, you push this one in, and to change this side, you pull this one out and turn. So push in and turn and pull out and turn. But you only want to do that when this is in this position here. Um, it's hard to turn when it's, you, you may not even be able to do it when it's in this position here. So make sure that when you turn this, that you push this over here. And if you always leave um, the machine in BL, which is B on this side and L on this one, you can do straight stitching and zigzagging without having to mess with anything. So this would be straight stitch and this would be a zigzag. And this would be a very, very narrow width zigzag. And this would be a wider zigzag. So um, if you look up here, these are the primary patterns and they will work all with B. And when you're on B, which is on this side, and you change any of these other patterns on the other side, you simply move this to get the width of stitch. If you want any of the other patterns that, are, that don't begin with the B, all these other ones, it changes things. So you have to pull this, put this on whatever pattern that you want and whatever pattern this one, and then you put the lever into the middle and it will do those other stitches that are up here. So they're, they're, they're not particularly exciting stitches unless you're doing something you want a decorative stitch. So I would suggest putting it over there, putting L and B and just leaving it there. Straight stitch, zigzag. Very, very simple. So that is a um, basic primer on the Singer 401A sewing machine. Incredible, uh, beautiful sewing machine. It's a classic, gonna last a long time.